for centuries, the Mokans have lived freely along the coasts of Thailand and Myanmar. They spend their lives on their boat homes, called kabong, sailing from island to island, subsisting on the fruits of the land and those of the sea. The Mokans only lead a semi-nomadic life now, but whenever they can, they set off as a family in their boats, journeying for days or even weeks, perpetuating a traditional maritime way of life that has characterized their identity and culture. The hull is badly damaged. I'll need to have a good look at it before we set out again. Look, it's this metal part here. It's all rusty. That's why the boat is leaking. We'll have to repair that before setting out. We'll need to carve out a piece of wood to fill in the hole. So you need to put a small piece of wood in that hole. Noi was born on a kabong 35 years ago. During the rainy season, he lives in a stilt house. But as soon as the weather improves, he sets out with his wife and children on a long journey. You're doing really well. How old is this boat? It's 10 years old. It was built by my father and my ancestors so that the younger generations could continue to live in the traditional way. These boats need a lot of looking after because they spend all their time in the water. There, that should hold until our next stopover. I need to take care of it because it's one of the last seaworthy boats still around and I hope it lasts as long as possible. Here I am, on board Noe's Kabong, with his wife, two children, and their grandmother. There are six of us in all, eating, sleeping, and fishing in this tiny space. The Kabong is more than just a boat for the Mokans. It's where they live. Everything they need, reduced to the bare minimum, is here. Where exactly are we going, Noi? I can't tell you exactly where we're going because I don't even know myself. I like being free and deciding day to day where to go. I don't really have a particular route. We're going to sail in and around the islands and we'll stop somewhere if we need something. That's freedom. Yes, you're free and you let the cabang guide you. The Mokans live off the coasts of Thailand and Myanmar in the Mergi Archipelago, a collection of 800 small, mostly uninhabited islands stretching over more than 400 kilometers in the Andaman Sea. Take care of the lines, grandmother. You have to unfold the sail first. Come on, let's hoist it. Okay, hoisting the sail. It's looking good. That's perfect, Mark. Off we go. <laughs> Where can I put my things? You can put them here. Ah, that's clever. This is where we put everything. That way they stay dry. We call this space the boat's belly. The front is called the mouth because that's where we climb back on after fishing. And we call the back of the boat the colon because that's where we go to relieve ourselves. So the boat is like a living creature? It's more than a boat to us. Our life springs from the boat. For example, I was actually born on a cabang, and so was grandmother. 
We spend the vast majority of our lives on a cabang, so it's almost like a body inside which we live. If you look after a Mokan cabang, it will take you wherever you want to go. Yuin is preparing the meal. Rice, sugar, and oil were traded for fish in coastal villages. Everything else has to be fished, or rather, hunted. Because Noi, like all Mokans, uses a harpoon and not a net. Go on, you can tie it up. A little bit more. It's important to make the hook as sharp as possible, because it'll go all the way through the fish, and then they can't escape. All right. Ah, the end is sharp enough now, so let's use this twine to tie it to the bamboo stick. Can you do it? You have to make the knot as tight as possible, so that the harpoon holds. So it must be really tight. Like this, is that good? Push it all the way down. For a beginner, you seem to have got the hang of it. Of course, if you've been doing it since you were little, you'd be really good at it now. A harpoon allows you to keep your distance from the fish so as not to scare them away. But the spear part can be right up close. So that when you spear it, the fish doesn't see it coming. Otherwise, it would escape and you wouldn't catch anything. So why do you use a harpoon and not a net? I only need enough fish to feed my family. When you use a net, you catch so many fish that you can't eat them all, and you have to throw them back in. When I need food, I go hunting, so I can actually choose the fish that I'm going to eat. The archipelago's seabed is covered with coral reefs and populated with sea urchins, starfish, sea anemones, sea fans, and myriads of brightly colored fish. When he goes hunting, Noi uses a harpoon weighing four kilos. It's not easy to catch a prey on the first attempt. Oh, that's a shame. That was a big one. He's much too quick for me. He goes too far and I can't keep up. Oh yes, underwater fishing is physically hard work. The fish swim quickly and are not easy to catch. Nowadays, I no longer have the strength to swim or hold my breath, which makes me sad. What I love about being underwater is that no one comes to talk to you or ask you for anything. There's no land, no boat. You're in another world.
Tamam.